10.7 is finally around the corner. So let's get right into the changes so you know exactly what's going on in this patch and what to look out for. Make sure you smash that like button, destroy the sub button, and let's jump right in. First of all, Riot is not pulling any punches. The full Fiddlesticks rework is coming out. We already covered the full Fiddlesticks kit on our 10.7 preview video, so if you want all the details, make sure you go check that out. However, let's hit the highlights just for everybody right now. As part of his passive, Fiddle can't buy trinkets. Instead, he has little Scarecrow miniatures that he can place on the map that will mimic an ability when an enemy champion comes nearby and triggers it. This could be anything from his Q all the way up to his ultimate, and I'm sure you can imagine just how much this can throw some people off. His Q can be used to do the exact same thing as it did before, except it'll also do current health damage. If a target has already been feared recently and he uses it on that target again, the damage is actually going to be doubled. This happens because passively anytime Fiddlesticks does damage to champions after being out of combat and not seen, he'll fear everybody that he hits in that moment. This means if you get a big AoE ultimate, you'll fear 5 people and you could choose somebody to do a big burst of damage to. Fiddlesticks W is still the old T-Poison Drain as it was in the past. However, now it's AoE and hits everything around you. If everything around you dies or you fully complete the channel, the cooldown is refunded by 60%. It's also important to know that this ability gives true sight of the people who you are draining. So even if they do walk into a nearby bush and they get stealth, you'll be able to see them still as will the rest of your team and the drain won't stop. The last ability that sees any changes is Fiddlesticks' E. That's because the iconic ultimate has stayed exactly the same. But as far as his E goes, Fiddlesticks now swipes in an area ahead of him in a crescent shape and anybody who's hit in the center gets silenced while everybody else gets slowed. Naturally, the ability does do damage, and of course the Tigers who are silenced will also get the slow. That's the best TLDR we can give you of all the Fiddlesticks rework changes. But let's keep moving on onto the actual changes of the patch, and as usual, we're going over the major changes first, and then the minor ones. Let's talk about what's the most important. Starting off with Galio changes. Galio's R now gives the full magic damage shield from his W to all allies in the area. This is a really, really big change because it happens on cast of the ultimate, not when he lands, so he gets to instantly give allies a big magic damage shield. Is an AP assassin giving your AD carry trouble? Well, probably not anymore with this change. And you have to remember that this change affects Galio in any role that he's played in, whether he's played top, mid, or support. The only downside to this big buff is that obviously it only works against magic damage, but when it's the right pick, it is so huge. Make sure you keep an eye out for the colossal impact from the Colossus himself. Next up on the list, Ivern sees some really interesting buffs. His E shield damage explosion goes up, especially at later ranks of the ability, and his R cooldown goes down by 20 seconds at rank 1 and 10 seconds at rank 2. This is really, really important. Remember that Ivern's R cooldown starts when he casts the ability, so if Daisy lives for the full 60 seconds that she can be around, that means that his ultimate is going to be under 80 seconds of cooldown, and even if he just has like 10% cooldown reduction, he's basically going to have Daisy up for a minute every minute. And Daisy is one of the most important tools for Ivern in the early game, as her incredible movement speed allows him to engage on a lot of people that don't want to be engaged on with the use of Daisy and his E-slow, as well as her knockup. Spinning and trying to win his way into our next slot, Garen is getting a couple nerfs here. It just seems like he's doing too well into pretty much everything, and not even high poke champions can defeat him, so they're targeting nerfs specifically at Garen's movement speed in his Q and in his passive regen. Specifically, the cooldown is going up just so that he can't regen as much. Even though going from 7 to 8 seconds might seem small, remember that 1 second just to have another ability up to poke at Garen and stop his healing yet again means that he's not getting that regen at all. And don't forget that if that wasn't annoying enough already, you've also lost a full half second of movement speed early on on your Q. It goes down to 1 second of movement speed early on in the game and then eventually scales back up to the old value. Movement speed is very important. It makes it harder to get out of ganks, it makes it harder to dodge skill shots, and when you consider that all these things are now impairing Garen even even more, well, he's probably going to be in an okay spot instead of being stupidly strong. Moving off the nerf train and back onto the buff train, Akali is getting a buff. Yes, that's right, Akali, the champion that Riot just can't seem to get right and consistently has one of the worst win rates that we've ever seen in the game. And the buff to her is that her ultimate cooldown is down early. Now, this might seem pretty insignificant, but you have to remember a few things. First of all, Akali is a champion who right now needs to snowball. She needs to get kills so that she has the extra energy from Presence of Mind to play with because of all the nerfs to her energy costs and the energy gain from her W. With the lead that she has, she'll be able to easily dominate dominate enemy champions even if she has less mobility. While we don't expect this to bring Akali all the way back up into viability, 
it's definitely going to be a step in the right direction. Being able to more consistently and more often all in your opponent when you're on a champion who wants to scale and get kills like Akali, well, it's a good move. As we continue riding the buff roller coaster, we've got a buff to Nasus. His W cast range is going up, and this is actually really important because Nasus can now wither any AD carry unless they have rapid fire cannon, at which point some of them will still outrange him. This doesn't just apply to AD carries though, remember there's a lot of other high range champions, somebody like Zareth or maybe even Anivia who could be really hard for Nasus to reach but if he can get his wither down on them, that might be enough to get them caught out of position and killed. Of course, this will also help his lane, as being able to slow his opponents from further away means that he could potentially catch up to them way more often. On top of that though, they're also buffing his E, so that the armor reduction goes up to 25% at rank 1, and this is where things start getting a bit crazy. That's as good as the Black Cleaver passive as a level 1 ability, like what? Just think about the scenario that happens when you fight a Nasus. Those situations where you barely live and you kill him, he wins those now because of the extra armor reduction, and when that happens and you think that Nasus is a champion who is so incredibly difficult to deal with once he starts getting ahead because every single time he cues you, he takes half your health away, well this becomes a big problem really quickly. Riot definitely gave Nasus a lot more bite this time around in this patch. They also did pull back a little bit of a change to his ultimate, but it was pretty silly, as Nasus' size when he used his R was scaling with how many Q stacks he had, but they probably took it away for a good reason, as he could get pretty large. Next this buff might seem really small, but I'll explain why it's really important. Riven's health goes up a tiny bit, which isn't really anything, 5 health isn't gonna save you from everything in the world, however, her health regen goes up by 1.5, and this is a really big change. Riven's health regen actually used to be the main point of balance for her in the past, and considering that even a little bit of a change amounts to big differences over a minute, you gotta be careful when you're buffing a champion like Riven, who has no resources and only has to worry about their health. Combo that with the fact that she can use her E shielding to block tons of damage and make her health regen even more effective after she has a couple trades in lane, well you gotta be careful, because even just a small tweak to the numbers can mean she has over a hundred more health than her opponent sometimes. Now we've rode that buff hype train for some time right now, but we gotta step off into the station and talk about the nerfs to Talon. Talon's been a front runner in the mid lane for quite a little bit now, and he did fly under the radar for a decent amount of time. However, Riot recognized that Talon was really destroying high elo, and so they're nerfing his ability to clear waves as reliably in the early stages of the game so that his roams aren't as devastating. Roaming is a skill that a lot of high elo Talon players will definitely abuse a lot and you might not see it as much in lower ranks. However, if you're trying to learn something like that, a skill like roaming or maybe just generic macro tips, make sure you go check out our website, GameLeap.com. We have tons of courses and videos up there to help you improve your gameplay and get better and everything that we have is made by challenger level players. Or hey, maybe you need to take another step back because you don't even know how to play Talon. Well, don't worry because we have champion guides too and I actually just did some on Talon directly. We're always trying to make more and better content for you guys so we can give you the best edge to improve and win in your games. So make sure you go check us out at the link below. To round out our major changes section, we've got a change to Wukong and a change to the conditioning room. Wukong first though, his passive gets nerfed at later levels. On top of that, his E also gets nerfed so it does less damage at higher ranks. This doesn't seem all that bad, but remember that you're at passive stacks a lot of times, so you will eventually lose quite a bit of armor, which will make you a decent bit less tanky in the fights that you're taking. The E damage nerfs do kinda suck, but they were mostly aimed at a specific mid Wukong build, and this might actually make it so that all Wukongs may want to max Q now. It's rough to say, and we'll need a little bit of time on the patch to see exactly what's going on, but just for now, keep in mind that the damage numbers are lower at later ranks. The last change that was made to Wukong is that now his Q and R are bufferable after his E, so when you're doing the dash, you can actually hit the button and it'll happen as soon as you get there. This is really nice and will help especially newer Wukong players be able to string their abilities together properly and not mess anything up. And like I said, the conditioning rune also got changed and is the last major change for our patch here. The rune's activation time has been moved back to 12 minutes and this might not seem like a big deal initially, but you gotta remember that if you happen to survive or maybe trade one for one or even get two kills on a tower dive because you had those extra resistances, you don't have that anymore until the 12 minute mark. And if you lose that tower dive now and you don't don't get anything out of it, that can be a huge turning point in the game. Is this going to affect everybody? No, it won't. Not everybody wants to take the conditioning rune, but for the champions who do take it, a lot of fighters, a lot of bruisers, and even some tanks, they're definitely going to feel the impact. So be careful if you're playing those champions. Now with that wrapped up, let's get into the minor changes. First up on the list is Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa's E cooldown is going down at later ranks, and she tops the minor changes list here because she was absolutely borderline. This ability could be important because every single time you auto attack with Kai'Sa, her E cooldown goes down by 0.5 seconds, and so losing 2 seconds on the cooldown in the late game could be pretty big. 
You just saved yourself 4 auto attacks worth of time to be able to stealth again, and that's no laughing matter. However, of course, this obviously takes a ton of time and requires you to be level 13 and have that kind of attack speed in the first place, so it's not going to impact you at most stages of the game. Next minor change, phase rush movement speed goes up for melee champions only. Now this isn't really that big of a deal because think about how many champions use phase rush, can you even name one off the top of your head? Honestly, I couldn't do it without thinking for it for quite some time. And remember, you gotta limit it to melee champions because that's the only thing that's getting buffed for the rune here. And even then, the only thing that I thought of was phase rush Darius, but that hasn't been around for a long time. Ever since the new Conqueror has been around, Darius has been absolutely loving that rune. Next up, Nocturne gets a nerf, and might seem like a bit of a weird one, but this is because Nocturne was too good of a counter pick in the mid lane against certain mages. So Riot nerfed his health regen and his magic resist growth to make it so that he wasn't as oppressive against those mages and to give them a better shot at poking him out. Of course, having less magic resist too will make it so that he might die in some of the all hins that he takes, but of course this is more targeted towards the long lane because you can see the health regen nerfs and that's where that really comes into play. Next up, Corky gets a buff to his W, specifically his special delivery W when he goes and picks up the package out in base. The special delivery burn when anybody gets hit by the package or walks over the burning trail now lasts a half second longer. This means more slowing, more damage, and of course, more damage in a big team fight where you manage to cut off a big choke point and that's the important part. However, this really only happens every so often and considering that usually you don't get the dream team combo there where you hit 5 people with it, it's not going to make that much of a difference. However, the 90% slow that gets extended for even just a little bit will absolutely be irritating. And last but certainly not least, the person who wins the most insignificant change on this patch is Xin Zhao, and Xin Zhao's passive healing goes up at later levels. This isn't really the buff that Xin Zhao needs, as he's more of an early game champion than anything else. Yes, his team fighting can be pretty strong in the mid and late game due to the amount of damage mitigation that his ultimate can bring him, but really, him healing for 50 more damage or 100 more damage in a late game team fight isn't going to make that much of a difference, especially if he can die in one shot thanks to some really crazy burst mages who are strong right now, and of course let's not forget about the fact that CC is all over the place. Xin Zhao is already struggling to get a lead and express having power over other junglers right now, so the fact that he doesn't get any sort of damage or anything else at all means that he won't be able to do any better in the early game than he already is right now, and that's just really not going to help him out too much. And speaking of help, if you're looking for help to get yourself improving and on track to winning all of your games in League, make sure you go check out our website GameLeap.com. No matter what kind of advice or guide you're looking for, we have something up there for you, I guarantee it. And even if we don't have a specific champion guide right now, we're always working at making more and better content for you guys with our challenger level content creators. And if you're looking for something specific, make sure you let us know in the comments, that way we can get to working on what you guys want right away. That way we can give you the best content to help you improve and win. If you made it this far, thanks for watching the whole video. What do you guys think about the patch? I think it's actually pretty tame, but a lot of good changes and right directions taken here from Riot. They definitely want to see how that Fiddlesticks rework is going to land, and honestly, I think he's looking really impressive right now. The amount of value that he brings with a good skill shot CC that silences and slows, as well as a point and click fear and more fears on top of what he already had in the past, sounds pretty good to me, Chief. But anyways, as always, my name is Ace Windstorm, and I will see you all later.